Hey, what's up, everybody? Alex called me and said, we got to do this video right now. So <laughs> we're doing this video right now. Uh, today, we're talking about uh, the difference between term and whole life insurance policies. Uh, I know it's a lot of things on social media. You know, you got the Dave Ramsey crowd and stuff saying term life insurance. You have other people out there that are saying no, no use whole life policies because you can invest in things like that and that nature. So today, we're just going to debunk, give the truth to facts or the indifference and give you the information so you can decide on yourself. With that being said, Alex, this is one that you wanted to do. So let's get into it. Yeah, so this is probably going to be more like a conversation because I'll be learning myself. I have term life policies, me and my wife. Um, mm -hmm. And it's because, you know, I heard it from Dave Ramsey, heard it from you. Um, but I keep hearing people on social media, like you said, and not that I pay attention to them, but then they threw out Rockefeller's name. And that's what made me think, okay, why did he get a whole life policy? And so mm -hmm. that's my biggest question. Um, they mentioned the Rocker the Rockefeller family has a whole life policy. And I'm trying to understand what exactly they mean by they're taking funds from the money in those policies. Is that the death uh, benefit or is that the benefit that they contribute to that whole life policy or how exactly does that work? All right. First, let's start off with what's a term policy and then what's okay. a whole life policy. Okay. So for a term life policy, let's just say we're going to start it at the same age. So we're going to say someone is 25. Someone is 25 and they get a 30 year policy. If they get a 30 year policy, they're going to pay somewhere between, depending on how much, let's say the policy is $300,000. Let's use that number as the death benefits, $300,000. So they'll pay about $30, $40 a month for over 30 years. And it's fixed rate is $30, is $30 a month uh, over the next 30 years for a $300,000 policy. Now with whole life, a whole life insurance policy, and it's the same person, $300,000, and that's for the life. It's no fixed term for 30 years. It's over the life of as long as the person is alive. That policy is going to cost somewhere about $199, $250, where a small percentage of that will be going towards the insurance policy itself. The other part will be going to what they call the investment. Um, I'll give you the exact term right here. Um the exact term is uh, it's called cash value. That's what I was looking for, cash value. So it's going to go into the cash value to, uh, you know, an investment or something like that. It's going to go into the cash value side of the policy. And then, you know, you'll keep paying that, you know, $250, $300 every month uh, for until you die. And then with the 30-year fix is you'll be paying $30 for 30 years. And then at the end of the 30 years, it'll get reassessed. It might jump up to, uh, you know, $60 over the next 30 years to cover the next 30 year policy. And then that's how it goes. So now with that being said, now what's the question? Okay. So the money that they're quote unquote pulling from, um, is this the money that's in the cash value account? Like, so I heard and, you know, I haven't honestly done too much investigation into the Rockefeller family on their whole life policies. But is this cash value money that they're pulling from to, quote unquote, buy investments or whatever? Or is this the death benefit that they're able to pull from? So with the whole life policy or universal policy or whatever you want to call it, um, the, it does have a cash value component of it. So. A, a portion of the money that you pay in every month go towards the death benefit side itself, towards that $300,000. And then the other portion of the money is going into what they call a cash value. Cash value is it goes into an investment that returns you about maybe three, max 5% a year on that investment. So when the let you keep calling the Rockefellers, but when somebody takes out money, they can borrow the money from they can never take out the money. So they can't take out the money like, hey, this is my money. 
take out the money and go buy whatever they want. They can borrow the money and they have to pay it back. So those monthly payments will become higher because you still got to pay the regular 260 plus the value. And then they, they could take the money out and spend it on whatever they want to spend it on. So, but it's from the cash value side. Okay, so basically, there will be no difference than getting a term value or a term life policy and what you would have contributed extra to a whole life, use that and just invest it yourself. Well, there is a difference. There is a difference. The difference is, is when you borrow money, as you know, you don't have to pay tax on it. If you, like you're saying, if you put, if you get a 30 year fix and then put the difference between what you would pay with that and a whole life in a mutual fund, when you sell a mutual fund to buy what you want, you have to pay taxes on the profits that you make. With a whole life universal policy, you can borrow money, you can borrow money, and you don't have to pay taxes on the borrowed money, and you're just paying that money back. So that's when you hear people say, uh, I'm my own bank, you know, because they're borrowing it from the policy. But now this is the thing, um, now that we know what it is, so, so just think about it. If somebody putting two hundred and fifty six dollars in a month, let's say fifty, let's say, let's just split it in half. Let's split it in half. Two sixty a month. One thirty goes towards the insurance policy. One thirty goes towards uh the insurance or the cash value side. So one thirty times twelve because it's twelve months in there, right? I'll just pull out a calculator because uh you know me I'm. I'm like basic training on this damn without. Uh, hold on a second. All right, so about 15, 16, 15, 16, I think. So 130 times 12. Mm. So it's like 15, it's like $1,500. So $1,500. And then uh, how much you, how much you need for buying a rental property in Florida? Lord. Maybe about four hundred, about sixty thousand. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. For a down payment, how much you need? Okay, let's say for yeah. about two hundred fifteen thousand, you need about seventy thousand adding in fees and everything else. So yeah. you need about seventy thousand. Right, right. So if you do seventy thousand divided by one five four six, so about forty five months. So about. No, no, 45 years. Sorry, that's not much. 45 years to come up with that down payment. Do that. So, yeah, it has an investment component to it, but the investment component is not beating the S&P 500. It's not averaging 10, 12% a year. Right. I mean, can you put more into the can you put more into the cash value side of the policy? Yes, you can. You can keep putting money in there, keep plugging money in there, keep plugging money in there, and then borrow against it, and then you got to keep paying monthly payments higher to get in there, to get a debt free, I mean, or a tax free return on the money because you borrowed the money and then you can buy, you know, an asset or something like that, but you don't have to pay the interest on it. You don't have to pay taxes on, let me say, you don't have to pay taxes to get the money out. Like you do if you had to sell a house, sell stocks, sell mutual funds, and things of that nature. Okay. So that's that's the difference. It is a it's a pseudo tax benefit on there, but you're when you put money into a whole life policy, it is not getting returned as something like the S P five hundred, ten percent, twelve percent a year. It's not. It's averaging. I mean, I'm seeing some places as low as one percent, some high as five percent, but I haven't seen none higher than five percent on a whole life policy. And the the difference between the mutual funds that you can select in a brokerage account and the funds that you can select in a and an uh, insurance policy is way narrow in the whole life than you can invest yourself. So basically, them using the Rockefeller name is just a sales gimmick to try and get you. It's a sales pitch. It's, it's a sales pitch. And the thing is, would it be smart for the Rockefellers to use a whole life policy? I'm. Just, why would they? Why? I mean, when you have you know billions upon trillions of dollars, it don't matter. But let's just say for the sake of I want to put something in investment and it grows over time and I don't want to pay taxes when I sell the investment, then okay. Okay. 
But I mean, you, you know, you done did some tax returns now with real estate. You know, if you're just using that money to buy real estate, you know, real estate will offset those taxes in a heartbeat. So why would that matter? That's just another thing to to put out there. And I'm not saying disinformation. And I would tell people I'd rather them have whole life insurance than no life insurance. So it's not a, you know, it's not a total knock on on it. If they're gonna get something, go ahead. Um, but right. now I thought she was gonna ask this question, but I throw it out there. This is the this is the part that nobody talks about. So let's say you go with this method that these you know gurus or whatever is calling about online. So let's say you go plug. In your case, you want to use it for tax free. You could take out money tax free, right? So let's say you go plug two million dollars in there, right? You still got the same two hundred fifty thousand dollar policy. You plug two million dollars on the cash benefit side, right? Let's say you die tomorrow. How much money do you think your family's gonna get? Hmm. I'm guessing just the death benefit. All they're gonna get the death benefit. The policy, the policy company keeps all the money that's in the cash value side. So that's why you hear them saying, Oh, well, I can use life insurance for when I'm living. Yeah, you can. But if you're if something happens and you die, the only thing they get is the cash benefit side. And then I'll read it to you so you don't think I'm crazy. Cause I just I asked the question, does life uh, for whole life insurance, the cash value do, do dependents receive it upon death? The answer, insurers will absorb the cash value of your whole life insurance policy after you die. And your beneficiaries will only receive the death benefit. The policyholder can only use the cash value while they are alive. That's it. So is that why the and I I know I keep bringing up the Rockefeller family. Is that why he's got it? They have it in a living trust, so that it's never deceased. They have what in the living trust? The the, the whole life policies. The whole life policy is in a living trust. The living trust is the beneficiaries of the policy, and again, I don't. I really, honestly, I don't believe the Rockefellers are using a whole life policy. I really don't. I really don't. I mean, somebody probably said it. It sounds good. I didn't, I didn't hear people say, I mean, come to my house and try to sell me insurance and say, uh, Oprah Winfrey and um, Warren Buffett, they over here holding on a whole life insurance policy. <laughs> I mean, it sounds good. It sounds good. You just think, you yeah, Rockefeller. Yeah. Rockefeller, I mean, just think, what kind of whole life policy do, would they have to have right. to put it in anything? Right, right, right. I mean, you have to throw a big name on there. That's how they advertise everything. You throw a big name on something, you can get people to buy Dogecoin. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, so that, the, yeah, you, you just throw a big name on all this stuff. And I mean, it sounds good, but money don't, I mean, at this point, Unless they giving out, they ain't giving out trillion dollar life insurance policy because that's what the Rockefellers are worth trillions. I mean, could they possibly have some insurance? You know, any kind of insurance, whole life or whatever. Yeah, but they're not using it for the cash value benefit of it because you just heard. No matter what the the death benefit is, and you you hear like I, I heard a rapper saying it. Oh yeah, you. You know, you put a whole bunch of money into a cash, uh, uh, a whole life policy on the uh, cash value side, and then you borrow, you borrow money and pay yourself back. Yeah, it sounds good, but anyone that's left in the cash value side, then what you do? So first, where do you get the two million dollars to put in there? I'm just using the the rapper who said it. Where do you get the two million dollars to put in there? That's already been taxed. So you're gonna put it in the cash value side, it's gonna grow one, two percent. So you're gonna forget investments that invest, you can invest and make more on. You're gonna get the one and two percent here for what again? So it grows slow as hell, so you really can't leverage unless you go put more money in there. It's just like a money market account on a return that is providing. It ain't really putting a real dent into, into the game to make it grow on an exponential range. But 
two and three percent is better than zero. So that's how it works. But the key, the key, the key to that whole thing is upon death, anything that you have in the cash value side, you don't take. And then I mean, people who who never, you know, they get 15, 20,000 in there and then they use in the cash value side and they take it out. So that 250 a month that they're paying, then they have to still pay the 250, but then they still got to pay back the money that they took out. So then they monthly payments go to 275, 300, 300 to 400, 400 to. And then next thing you know, you look up and be like, damn, I can't even afford the monthly payments because, of course, most people ain't going to use the money to create wealth. They're going to use the money to go buy the appreciating asset that they could just flown around. So is it an application for it? But if you if you just wanted to go buy stuff that depreciate in value, if you want to go buy stuff that wasn't assets, then yeah, it makes more sense. But you can still get the same tax advantage by buying a a rental property, letting the rental property go up in value, refi, taking the money out, and rinse repeat doing that over and over and over again. And using the the tax write-offs from excuse me, the tax write-off from the rental property to get this the same benefit of the non-taxes you have to pay in a whole life policy and get a bigger return. So that's the odds and the ends of it. I hope that made sense. Yeah, this was a learning process for me so yeah it makes sense it clears it up that's that's kind of what i thought too like and that's that was kind of my viewpoint was for someone who does know how to invest why would you choose that you know the you know I like for somebody mm -hmm. for somebody that don't know how to invest why would you choose that i mean the thing is you can look anywhere and say invest in the s p 500 you're going to do two to five times better than yeah what your money's going to do in the cash value account I don't think people even trust like the stock market as many people as I've told buy the SPY and they've veered away from it just because it's a stock market, but someone that can guarantee them a return on their money, they'd rather keep it in that like CD funds and all that. Hold on. Let me see what investments are in a whole life policy. Whole life policies offer coverage and accumulates a cash value over time. Cash value. So again, it's more like a money market account. And then it says, this type of permanent life insurance may suit high net worth individuals and parents with lifelong financial dependents. Meaning like people who, you know, your kids are dependent on this money. So you can just kick off money to them and you ain't got to pay extra tax. But then, depending on your budget, the low rates of return might not offset the high premium that you're paying. Because it's a low, it's a low budget of return. It's not you, they're guaranteeing you one or two percent. It's like a money market account. It's not like it's sitting in nothing that you're going to return. Yeah, it's safe. Safe like a CD, safe like a savings account, but it's not a it's not something that I would I would expect to, you know, people thinking that. Oh, I can put fifty dollars a month in this, and then I can go ball out. Not gonna happen. You know, I mean, I have to look more into the. I think there's ultra a high net worth individuals using it because I mean that goes to your thesis about the Rockefellers, but I don't even see. I don't. I don't understand what's the point of it. But I'm not gonna disregard it. But I don't. I don't understand why they would be doing it. And then, all right. So here we go. I read this right here. When is whole life insurance worth it? You've, ma you've maxed out your retirement accounts. If you're a high net worth individual who has made all the allowable contributions to your tax advantage accounts like 401k plans, individual uh, retirement plans, you could use a whole life policy to top up your tax deferred savings. Now it makes sense to do that. If you just say, oh, I can put this money in a universal account and it shows my income it shows my income lower because I'm using a tax tax deferred, tax deferred, that tax deferred. That makes sense. The cash value will earn dividends and interest over years. And when your children are adults, your mortgage is paid off and you no longer need life insurance for whatever reason, you can surrender your policy and collect the cash. 
If you surrender the policy, be aware that you will most likely be subject to income tax on the value it has gained. And your beneficiaries won't receive a death benefit when you die. If you cancel the policy, surrender the policy, then you still got to pay tax on it. So all the stuff that the YouTube people are saying is about you putting money in there, putting a lot of money in there, then borrowing against it tax-free and paying yourself back. If you have a lifelong dependent such as a child with a disability, life insurance can offer a peace of mind to anyone with financial, financial dis, uh, dependence. If you're a parent carrying a child with a disability, a whole life policy might suit your situation as it typically provides long life coverage, giving your family a sense of financial ab ability. It ensures your child is still eligible for government benefits like supplementary social security income, avoiding naming them as your beneficiary. Instead, consider setting up a special needs trust. An attorney can help you place your whole life policy into that trust, and you can appoint a trustee such as a guardian to manage the money on the behalf of your child. So you can do that on term life policy too. Uh, the trust is the beneficiary. You're not just handing it to the kid. Uh, you may, you may, uh, you want to help your family pay uh, estate taxes. If your estate is worth two, 12.9 million or more, this is the federal tax, tax exemption limit for 2023. So the IRS might label, levy a uh, estate tax on any assets above the threshold when you die. In addition, some states charge their own estate or inheritance tax. For example, New York uh, estate tax kicks in after 6.58 million. Thanks to the cash value component, your whole life insurance is a form of forced savings. While you hold the policy until you die or surrender it for cash when you retire, whole life insurance can give your loved ones the money they need to pay estate taxes without having to dip into other accounts. So what, what's special... Uh, I can tell you about the I can tell you about the investment portfolio. The cash value on a whole life insurance policy grows at a set rate, and the returns are dependable. They're not subject to ups and downs in the market, so you won't lose any money if the market takes a turn. Uh, this differs from other permanent policies like variable life insurance, variable universal life insurance. Like the with these policies, the cash value grow at a variable rate, meaning returns are subject to market conditions and aren't guaranteed. Uh, the drawbacks of whole life uh, insurance as an investment, the cost of whole life policies tend to be much higher than term life policy. For example, a healthy 40-year-old can expect to pay an average annual premium of $7,000 for a $500,000 policy, while a woman of the same age might pay $5,900 according to uh, Quote City, uh, a life insurance broker. To compare, a term life policy for a 40-year-old would cost $340 for a man and $283 for a woman per year on average. So it's a big difference. That the, the difference from what you can put in your that you got to pay for term policy, you can fully max out your Roth IRA every year from what you got to put in universal. And the Roth IRA is tax, I mean, there's no taxes on that money. And then when you die, you still got the death benefits and all the money accumulated in the Roth IRA to pass off to your dependents if you want to do that. So I know I read a whole bunch of stuff, but I just wanted to give you all the insight that the interweb had in there. So. Okay. Yeah. Clears it up. Makes more sense. I was, uh, I was kind of confused on uh, what exactly whole life was, but now uh, that makes more sense. I mean, it, it sounds good. I mean, I used to, and even in the army, I used to have this old guy, and I got, I got sucked into it. Uh, I had this older guy. He knocked on my barracks door. Hey, this we we just about to go to Iraq. Hey, do you uh you have life insurance? I'm like, I'm in the military. You know, I got it. And he was like, but but is that that two hundred fifty five hundred thousand dollars gonna be enough to take care of your family? And tell me, I had no family. First off, it was just me. I had a you know, I mean, well, I had a son at the time. I take that back. I just, but five hundred thousand dollars, he'll be he'll be all right. He'll be all right. And he convinced me to, oh yeah, you need to take a whole life on top of that. So I'm paying whole life. Then I just stopped paying it in the middle of the tour. I just said, man, I'm not paying this no more. Man, you know, I just whatever. But I can see the money that's going to the cash value side. I'm looking like, what the hell is this gonna do? 
Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's what I do. I, I mean, and like these premiums, the premium is that payment. That payment, but then you got to pay the access. You got to still pay that premium plus the access you borrow. Like, yeah. You can do the same thing with real estate. You can do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. With real and that's my point too, because I I've been hearing people say, "Oh, but you can you don't have to pay taxes on the money." And I'm like, you know, I, I mean, yeah, you can do the same thing with real estate minus the fees. Let me say minus the yeah. fees, because somebody gonna point out, "Oh, but you still got when you refi, you got to pay these extra fees." Yeah, you can take the money out from there with less fees. Right, but. No, yeah, well, there's so many. First, you got to get money. First, you got to get money in there to be able to take it out. Yeah. There's so many tax so, deductions with real estate. I learned that. Yeah. This year. So, but. That there you there you have it. That's really the difference between term life insurance, whole life insurance, and what's best. Me personally, I have term life insurance, and I use a method that. Me and Alex talked about, I pay the low monthly premium for the term life insurance. And then I use all the excess to make sure I fund all my tax deferred accounts, the 401ks, the Roth 401ks, the Roth IRAs, uh, anything I can to pay less and less taxes. I throw money into that. But if I had to use a, a whole life or universal life or something like that, I just don't see it's not enough juice in the squeeze for me to pivot from one way to the other on that one. So all that being said, guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button. Leave a comment down below what your opinion is. Share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.